Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today we're gonna be going over in the game of Oxygen Not Included the Cool Slush Geyser and the Door Compression Method. Of course, that means today's video is going to be the Cool Slush Geyser Tamer. Of course, this door compression method can actually be utilized for just liquid storage, any other liquid geyser, and does not have to be specifically the Cool Slush Geyser. This is just gonna be the way we're gonna be taming this geyser as of today. The uh, cold slush geyser is going to be a cold liquid. This is not specifically made for cold liquids. This is just going to be a liquid storage. But because of how there's a lot of different methods to do things into the game, I thought we could showcase a door compression method today. Of course, to get it started, let's actually watch as the uh, cool slush geyser goes through one of its processes. That way you guys will see what you guys are expecting and we'll get to see this in action. All right, so... The cool slush geyser is almost there, and the moment the polluted water touches that tile, everything triggers on, and there we go. So, the bottom door is going to close, the top three are going to open, allowing the water to fall, and then the top door is going to close, separating the top and bottom poles again, and then the other doors are going to close in a sequence to allow them to be compressed. After the last door closes, we wait for this to be refilled once again, and then that's the entire process. As you can see right here, we have about 3,000, 2,000 kilograms of polluted water per tile. And of course, this is never going to break as long as you use the airflow tiles to line up your liquids. But that's going to be how one of the processes goes, and let's go into the design. So the cool slush geyser is going to be spilling liquids into these spaces right here. We're going to be filling up two tiles by two tiles, so it's four tile space. And once it actually reaches above that, it's going to trigger the automation to turn on. And once that happens, the doors will open and close in a sequence to allow the water to drop safely. Open and close the top and bottom doors so we could change the locks of how everything works and then compress everything down. And of course, everything is going to be based off of automation so we're using a liquid element sensor on the liquid that we're storing in our case it's going to be polluted water we have a filter off the off the start and that's because the moment this triggers on and the door is open it's going to immediately go into red again i just wanted to buffer that so we have a buffer gate on two seconds right here after that that feeds into a filter gate of two seconds so that's so that we could have this door close in time because of the high pressure, the moment the other doors open, all of the liquids are going to want to push out. So the timing is very critical. So this is a two second buffer, two second filter. That line goes into a not gate to the bottom door. The filter gate that's coming out of the output of the filter, not bypassing it, is going into a buffer and also the first door. The output of the buffer goes into the second door while going into another buffer that feeds into the third door. All of these buffers here at the bottom are three seconds. Now that's really just how the design is, very simple setup. And of course the bottom part right here below the door, you guys could actually change this to a different size if you guys want to have more liquid pumps, if you guys want to change how the compression works. Maybe you don't have as much space and you have to move the pump to the side right there. That's actually fine. As long as this section is not changed with the automation still holding it in place, as long as you don't change anything here, and then you guys line it up with airflow tiles so that the water pressure doesn't break the tank, you'll be fine. We also have a liquid lock up top. I really just have this as a safety precaution in case a liquid tries to push into the liquid lock, which causes some spills. And that's why we have the top lip. Otherwise, there is a little bit of thermal energy, but it does leak through the crude oil down there. As you can see, this is not a good way to maintain the thermal energy. And that's really because of the gas. It's going to be hard to actually try to stop the thermal energy of a cool slush geyser from leaking due to the fact that it creates polluted oxygen which acts as a medium to start touching a lot of things like the hot oil right there so it's going to be really tough to keep this as close to minus 10 as possible as that's the spawn temperature of that now because the cool slush geyser does spawn liquid at minus 10 degrees and it is polluted water when you guys do decide to actually sieve it to get regular water unless you're using the polluted water as a liquid medium for something 
a lot of the times if you guys do sieve it you're gonna get a broken sieve and that's gonna be because the water is actually too cold as at minus eight degrees once this becomes water it actually transfers the same temperature meaning that water that freezes at any negative temperature is going to break the pipes as the polluted water becoming water as soon as it touches the pipe it's going to solidify and as soon as it leaves the sieve and then causing the initial pipe breakage so that means one of the things i would recommend is actually trying to expend the cold energy whenever you can there is going to be a lot of methods for you expend the cold thermal energy you could run it through a hot area a single tile at a time so that you can consistently chill out the area and so that you don't over chill it so fast so that there's no heat energy for you to absorb you actually want to absorb as much heat energy as you can so having a long radiant pipe will easily overwhelm the area meaning that it's going to chill cold faster and it's going to mean that you're not going to actually keep that heat energy absorbed consistently as once you chill it down and bring it to that negative temperature you're not heating up your water enough in order to actually have it be seen another method you guys could do is run it through a pool of water especially if you have that chilling your oxygen by running the cold polluted water in a large tank like that you actually are almost guaranteed to strip as much of it as possible due to the specific heat capacity and of course overall volume you're going to be running 10 kilogram pipeline bubbles versus full tiles and if you guys don't even use this to cool down your oxygen having a tank with chilled liquid is always a good thing to have as you guys could use this as just a cold front to just sit there and slowly dissipate a lot of the heat energy because the cold energy is trying to spread as much as it can along the gases. Of course, it's going to be up to you the method you choose to add heat energy to your cold polluted water so that you could safely see. But that right there, guys, has been the door compression setup. Of course, doors never break as well. And by the automation setup, we open and close the doors in a sequence so that we could push the liquids down, keep it closed, and then once we're ready to add more liquid in, we could open and close it safely. With this method, you do have to use a liquid pump to pump out the liquids, as most of the infinite liquid storages have that requirement. It's gonna be hard to actually have that feed into something like a pitcher pump due to the uh, liquid pressure always going to be fluctuating. But guys, that has been the cool slush geyser tamer using a door compression method if you guys have any questions about the design leave a comment down below hope you guys enjoyed today's video and of course guys don't forget to like and subscribe thank you guys